Hello, I'm Dr. Rosalind Biggs with Oklahoma State University Cooperative Extension and College of Veterinary Medicine. When we talk about our vaccines, we really want to think about from the start of purchase, how we're going to handle those and how we're going to administer those all the way to the point we have them in the calf. So at the time of purchase, it's really key to make sure you're buying from a good distributor. We also want to take care of those vaccines all the way through. One thing that, that works well is to make sure that you have a cooler, even at the point you're purchasing vaccines to transport those to the house. For our refrigerators that are gonna keep these vaccines, we wanna make sure we keep them between 35 degrees and 45 degrees. One thing that is helpful is to have a vaccine thermometer that can be used uh, not only in that refrigerator at home or in the barn, but also in your vaccine coolers on site the day of processing. For our vaccines themselves, we've got some differences between, between products. And so we always want to read the label and consult your veterinarian with the appropriate products for your specific animals or groups of animals that you may be processing. As we get prepared for processing day, we need to think about syringes and needle selections. If you're gonna use a multi-use syringe, it's ideal to have these that are color-coded so that you know you always use one product in the black syringe and you always use one product in the yellow syringes. You want to make sure on those multi-use syringes that you are cleaning those regularly after use so that they're ready to go for the next time of processing. And you do not want to have disinfectants inside those syringes because they will inactivate your vaccines. I particularly like to use in, in small groups of cattle disposable syringes. Disposable syringes will come in multiple sizes, so that will help when we're selecting different vaccines that may have a different dosage. Again, we always wanna read the label and consult with your veterinarian on which vaccines are appropriate. Another handy trick if you're gonna use disposable syringes is to use some tape. You can color code those syringes to make sure that we're always picking up the blue syringe if we're giving a clostridial vaccine or always picking up the yellow syringe if we're giving a respiratory vaccine. When it comes to needle selection, it's important that we keep in mind the smaller the gauge of the needle, the larger the diameter of the needle. For most of our products like vaccines, we're gonna use a small gauge. For thicker products that'll have a thicker viscosity, we, such as antibiotics, we're going to use a larger gauge needle. So for instance, if I'm going to use antibiotics, I'm gonna pick in most cases, a 16 gauge needle to administer that, that particular product. It's important to not only pick the appropriate gauge, but also to pick the appropriate length of needle for the group of cattle and the product that we're using. You wanna be cautious too, even though most of our colors stay consistent with our needles, there are some variability between manufacturers. And so make sure you put some eyes on, on the labels of those needles to make sure you're actually picking the one you think you are. When it comes to modified live vaccines, we need to choose a, a dosage in a bottle that's gonna be appropriate for our processing conditions. So in particular, the number of cattle that we are going to be able to process in an hour. Because once we mix a bottle, we need to be able to use that uh, in an hour. And so in many cases, it may be more cost effective and more beneficial to make sure that we have good vaccine going into those cattle to choose multiple small bottles rather than one large one. Now for the modified live vaccines, we're gonna have to mix those. They're gonna come with, in most cases, a sterile diluent that needs to be mixed with a dry cake. So for that, we're gonna use a transfer needle works best. It's always important anytime we're entering a vaccine bottle, regardless of whether that's a modified live or a killed vaccine, that we're always using a brand new needle that's going into that bottle so we don't contaminate the vaccine. For these modified lives on these transfers, you wanna use that one end of the transfer needle into the sterile diluent. And then you put the other side of the transfer needle into the cake. Then I'm gonna slowly rock to mix. And then I'm going to take my Sharpie 
and I'm going to write what time I mix that because I need to use this within an hour and I want to make sure that we've got good vaccine going into those cattle. The serial numbers are also important. I want to make sure I'm using end date vaccine. And an easy way to record serial numbers that I like is to just take a picture of those in close so that I have the date I administered those vaccines and the serial numbers associated with that vaccine. And then I can move that over to my either electronic or paper records when I get to the house. As a reminder, you want to make sure that you're using this modified live within an hour of mixing. You also want to keep it cool while you're on site processing. So our vaccine coolers are going to do a good job of that. You can use some ice packs in there, keep them cool all day. I like this one in particular for these pistol grip syringes because they slide right in here. We also have a good example. If you're looking to make a vaccine cooler, we have an Oklahoma State fact sheet on that. When administering injections, with very rare exception, we're gonna administer both antibiotics, vaccines, and other medications. Again, always according to label instructions and always at the direction of your veterinarian. The site we're gonna use in, in most cases is going to be in the neck. We've drawn a triangle on this cow for, for our injection area that we can use to administer those. We're gonna administer them underneath the skin or subcutaneously. In summary, make sure you're reading labels and following instructions as advised by your veterinarian. Needle and syringe sizes should be selected so that they're appropriate to the animal and the medication being delivered. Be sure you're taking care of your medications, in particular vaccines. Vaccines should be stored at 35 to 45 degrees from the time of purchase to administration. Always use a new needle when drawing up vaccine to avoid contamination. Make sure you're properly mixing modified live vaccine and using in a timely fashion. Keep records of all medications given. In particular for vaccines, your records should include the contents, expiration, and serial numbers. It's important with BQA guidelines that we administer all medications as directed. For the vast majority of injections, we're going to be administering those in the neck in front of the slope of the shoulder. Be sure if you have questions to consult your veterinarian and reference your BQA guidelines.